Hi and welcome back to another video. Today I will cover a highly requested video. I brought in most of the 3D printers that I have and that I use often for a instruction packed, very concise review of each printer but it will all be contained within this video. I have done a couple of these in the past and they have been received quite well, so you might wanna take a look at those. I might also refer to the printers used in those past videos in this one. But with that being said, let's check out the competition. Starting off with the beautiful looking JG Aurora A5S, the Ender 3 Pro, we have the TiVo Nereus, the Seamorph, the Orca Cygnus, Sortrax M200 Plus and lastly the Creality CRX For starters you have to appreciate the cleanness I mean every other 3d printer have all these wires going crisscross applesauce, but the JJ Aurora is looking really clean Okay, so this is the A5S with a 300 by 300 by 320 millimeter build volume, so fairly large. It's right around $400, probably a little bit less, and it's close to fully assembled. Literally 10 minutes of work and you will be up and running. And I've used it for approximately 400 hours. This is the ideal setup, I like it a lot. So you can choose between a rugged surface or a glass surface for glossy bottom print or if you want it to stick even better. I, I didn't think the heated bed would work as well as it did due to the big size but it did reach 100 degrees fairly quickly and without too much effort. So ABS was no problem whatsoever. It, it stuck very well to the rugged surface and it pops right off when once it cools down. Nylon I haven't tried but I suspect it would work in a similar fashion. There is a couple of parts in here that used to be 3D printed and they are now injection molded which is one of the upgrades they did from the A5 to the A5S in combination with a new motherboard inside here they have a 32-bit controller with new stepper drivers that make sure stepper motors almost completely silent which is a big bonus in my book. In terms of things I don't like about this printer it's not that many I like the upgrades they've done it's reasonably priced other than the lack of Ninja Flex compatibility and it does not come with any auto calibration which I think it's fine without it because of the glass but other than those two Okay, so this is the Ender 3 Pro and I do also want to talk about the Ender 3 and how they compare each other but first let's acknowledge the basics so the build volume is 230 by 230 by 250 the price is less than $200 and it comes mostly pre-assembled. It takes right around an hour, but it's really simple to do. And I've used it for about 1500 hours. So I feel fairly, fairly comfortable with this machine. For me personally, the build volume is top one, top two priority. And the Ender 3 is on the smaller side. It's, it's one of the smallest I have here. Just like our smartphones and TVs, 3D printers have just gotten bigger and bigger and I hope it stays on that trajectory. Okay, I know it sounds like I'm bashing on the Ender 3 here, but I'm really not. This is still my one of my favorite printers. I wouldn't be able to have done all those 1500 hours of printing if I didn't think this was good. Creality made the original Ender 3 and then an upgraded version called the Ender 3 Pro. They decided to add on a magnetic bed that does not work at high temperatures. The magnetic force weakens as the temperature rises and it does not even work at room temperature. It cannot withstand the warping of PLA. It's absolute trash and I ripped that off the second day I got it. I try to do all my lithophanes on the Ender 3. It generally turns out the best, but the surface finish and, and the level of detail is just superior across the board. The Ender 3 or the Ender 3 Pro, I would still go with the Ender 3 and you save a few bucks. The same thing with the JG Aurora and the Bowden setup in general, they do not work all that well with very flexible filaments, which, which is very unfortunate. And a couple of things I would like to see with the Ender 3. I would like to see a Ender 3 Pro 2.0, a direct drive extruder, a glass bed and silent stepper motors. Okay, let me present the TiVo Nereus, the printer that brings nothing new to the table. 
It's a printer with a build volume of 320 by 320 by 400 millimeters. It's right around $400, a little bit more, $450, anywhere between there. And it comes mostly pre-assembled. It takes 20 minutes to set up. And I've used it for like 300 hours. But you, you see where I'm going at. Like most printers bring something new to the table. That might be the price is really good. It might be that it has a big build volume or dual extrusion. It brings something new to the table. But the TiVo Nereus is very much like the CR10 we saw last year. Yes, it does have a touch screen. And yes, it does have a Wi-Fi module, which is good to see. But in terms of what it can do, I, I wasn't overly impressed and I wasn't disappointed either. It just, it is what it is. Wh why does it feel like I'm disappointed in all these printers? Like, I want to make that very clear. These are the printers that I use often because they are simple and reliable to use. It prints all the filaments well. I have been a fan of the extruders that TiVo has because they seem to work quite well with flexible filaments as well as PLA. Print sticks very well to the surface, a little too well you might say. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with the printer, but again, it's just a CR10 clone and the original CR10 is like a hundred bucks less. Just putting that out there. <laughs> Man, that's quite a segue. Going from relatively inexpensive printers to an absolute workhorse of machines. I do have a separate box with all the accessories. CNC plate, paste extruder, laser, CNC, dual 3D printing, single 3D printing, glasses and more stuff. This is the Seamorph VX, the only all-in-one printer that I will have in this video, meaning it comes not only with 3D printing, but also CNC and laser. It's $4,400. The build area is 230 by 230 by 200, something like that. It depends on what tool head you're using. It's not outrageous, but considering it can also cut stuff and burn stuff, I'm pretty happy with it. it. Literally comes like this in the box, and I've used it for more than 500 hours. The level of detail I've seen on the prints I've done so far has been absolutely phenomenal, and the tuning required has been little to none. I, I would have liked to see a bigger build volume. I would also have liked to see a stronger, more powerful laser. It would also have been nice if there were an official statement saying that you can cut metal like aluminium. If you came for the sole purpose to find out which printer is RC Lifon's favorite, well, Search no more because it would be this one. Uh, this massive thing is the Orca Cygnus 2 and it has a build volume of 400 by 400 by 450 millimeters. It's $1,500, comes mostly pre-assembled, takes about an hour to put together. And I have used it for more than 1,500 hours, no doubt. You know, even though this is my favorite printer, right, it still has room for improvement on so many levels. When you get it, it will be very loud. So I installed motor dampeners, I removed the fans just to make it quiet. The heat bed it doesn't reach more than 90 degrees Celsius. I'm looking for something to be able to print large and really quickly, and that's exactly what I can do with this machine. And it even comes with uh, a dual extrusion system that you can simply unhook with, uh, with two magnets and you can install a dual extrusion. The extruder is absolutely superb. It can print with NinjaFlex two, three times faster than most other machines. Yes, it may be my favorite. It doesn't mean it should be yours. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this to a beginner. I mean, it is $1,500. We are getting up to the higher end of 3D printers. Um, that's just my thoughts on the subject. It has all these hatches, so it must be expensive. Uh, okay guys, this is another very, very high end, if not highest of the ends, 3D printer called the Sortrax M200 Plus. And it has a build volume of 200 by 200 by 180 millimeters. It comes fully assembled and it is $3,000. 
and I've only used it for less than 100 hours so this is a very new machine even to me it got so much stuff going for it it's crazy just a beautiful piece of engineering it's fully enclosed it has a perforated bed plate the extruder is a high temperature extruder so it can reach 290 degrees Celsius so you can do the very high temperature nylon very exotic filaments and it has Wi-Fi uh, the touchscreen is legit looking better than my smartphone Oh wow, look at this, it even shows you the model. Uh, this cover is an add-on, so you can have a filter removing all the smells and uh, emissions. However, I have already come in contact with a couple of problems, one of which being this cover that you can purchase separately. The idea is that it brings out by a fan, uh, cleans out air on the way out, causing a lot of circulation inside the printer, making ABS and different filaments to warp much easier. I'm not a huge fan of the perforated board, it makes everything stick really well, but you are forced to use a raft which adds time 1 to 30 minutes depending on the size of the print. The software is just like a double sided coin, it's perfect for beginners because they don't have any settings to mess up, but it's really frustrating for someone uh, that has been in the, in the game for a long time and wants to adjust and tune the settings till perfection and you just can't because they don't allow you to edit any settings. It's perfect for beginners if you have $3,000 burning a hole in your pocket. Last but not least, the CRX. I wanted to have a dual extrusion through the printer in the mix just to really round it out. This is the Creality CRX with a build volume of 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters. It's uh, what, like $700? And it comes mostly pre-assembled, very uh, neatly enclosed in the box. And I have used it for about 400 hours. The real reason I wanted to have the CRX in the mix is because the, it's the one dual extruder printer that I really enjoy using. Uh, dual extrusion, being able to print with two colors, two filaments, can be achieved in different, different ways. And I have tested most of them, but I keep coming back to this kind of setup. It's very clean looking with the touch screen and all the cables being all tidied up. Uh. I didn't have so much to say about this. A quick recap of all the printers and which one I would recommend to you. Personally, I use the Orca Cygnus and the Ender 3 the most. The Orca Cygnus at a much higher price point, I would recommend starting with any of these three. The JG Aurora A5S, the Ender 3 or the Tivo Nereus. The all-in-one C-Morph, I haven't tested the CNC or the laser, but the 3D printing and the thick paste extruder has been working flawlessly. If you just want to jump in the 3D printing space without too much knowledge, maybe you don't want to learn every single setting there is, you just want a functional, good 3D printer. I haven't tested this printer too much, so take what I say with a grain of salt, but the M200 Plus seems to work really well. And for dual extrusion, the Creality CRX would be a great choice. Um, Okay, I seriously hope you found today's video helpful, sharing my knowledge about all the printers. You can find all the links in the description below. And if you would like to support the channel, then please take a visit to my uh, Patreon page. Alright, have an awesome day. Bye. See you again soon.